Welcome to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast, powered by Jetro. Each week, we bring extremely valuable accounting and tax tips specific to small business owners. You will be on your way to growing your business and putting more money in your pockets. Here's your host. Hello and welcome back to another episode. Today's topic is how are startup costs handled? Now, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Jetro and the Tax Minimization Program, which is a training program to ensure that you pay the least amount in taxes as legally possible. To join our tax minimization program, go to taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash tax. I am your host and founder of Jetro, Mike Jezoshek. Again, today's topic is how are startup costs handled? So first off, you know, this comes into play when you're thinking of starting a business. And I just want to say, if you're in this situation where you're thinking of starting a business, congratulations. This is one big step in tax savings. We always talk to people and say, hey, if you want to save taxes, be a business owner. Because you have the opportunity to turn everyday expenses that are normally not deductible into deductible expenses that are not available to typical W-2 employees. So we talk to people all the time that our successful careers, their W-2s, and they say, I'm just paying too much in taxes. What can I do? And I said, well, do you have a side business? Are you generating income somewhere else? If you are, how can we get that into a business and at least move a portion of your income into a business so that we can start taking deductions to offset that? So either way, wherever you are in the stage, um, we're going to be talking about startup costs and how those are handled today. And basically, we get this uh, a lot from people in our free Facebook group. This question comes up all the time. I haven't started a business yet, but I have all these costs associated with research and everything else. How are those handled? And so that's what we wanted to talk about today. If you haven't joined our free Facebook group, go to Facebook, type in Small Business Tax Secrets, answer a few questions, and join that free Facebook group. So what are startup costs? You know, and instead of waiting until you officially open your business, you can actually start the timer now on expenses that can be deductible. So first off, I want to read from the IRS website. Startup costs are amounts paid or incurred for creating an active trader business or investigating the creation or acquisition of an active trader business. And to qualify as a startup expense, it must meet both of the following tests. One, it is a cost you could deduct if you paid or incurred it to operate an existing active trader business in the same field that you're entering into. So let's say you're looking to start a restaurant. Would this be a deductible business expense if you were running an active restaurant? And so it must meet that test. And two, it is a cost you pay or incur before the day your active trade or business begins. So to qualify as a startup expense, it must be a cost that you could normally deduct in everyday business operations. So we can't just take go to a water park and you know we're looking to start an accounting firm. We can't go to a water park and say, hey, this is going to be a business expense. No, that's not part of a startup cost. So it'd have to be a cost that would be typically deductible in your industry. And it is a cost that you pay or incur before your active trader business begins. So here are some common kind of startup expenses that we see travel costs. So maybe you might be um, looking to start a restaurant in a, in a city three states from you. Traveling there, investigating, looking at other places. Maybe you're looking at other how other restaurants do it. Travel costs will be included. Meals. You might be going out and, and talking with other colleagues that already have businesses in that industry and just learning from them. You know, what are, what do you have going on? What, what, what are you, um, you know, how is your business run? That would be a, a startup expense. Training costs, market analysis, books or magazine purchases related to the business, um, office supplies that you have at the beginning, um, advertising fees for the actual opening of your business, any kind of wages or contract labor that you do for maybe consultants or employees, things like that. These are some common items that we think of as startup costs. Costs that do not qualify as startup expenses would be interest, taxes, research and development costs. Now, these can generally be deducted under another tax law provision, but they're just not considered startup expenses. So a lot of times when we talk about startup expenses, people say, what about organizational costs? And the IRS has something like that. And so organizational costs you might think of as a startup cost. And The IRS actually has two separate categories for what you might think of as a startup cost. We discussed startup costs above, but then there's also organizational costs. And those are expenses expenses that you have for the actual formation of the company. 
So this would be if you're setting up an actual entity and not just a sole prop. This would be creation of an LLC or a corporation and those types of items. So examples of organizational costs are state incorporation or registration fees, legal and accounting fees, um, the cost of temporary directors or the cost of organizational meetings to get your business up and running. So to summarize, you may have both startup costs which would be research, analysis, things like that, employees. And you might have organizational costs, which would be those costs that you use to, um, to create the actual entity. So now that we kind of know, okay, what is a startup cost and, and what is an organizational cost, how does the deduction work for those? And there's an important number that we want to think of, and it's $50,000. It's $15,000 for each startup and organizational costs. So when we talk about these numbers, it's $50,000 for each category, not combined, but separately. So if your startup costs, and we're going to be talking about startup just in general because that's the easiest, uh, organizational costs would be the exact same treatment. But if your startup costs are less than $50,000, you're able to deduct $5,000 in the first year the business starts, and then you would amortize the remaining. If your startup costs are $50,000 or more, your first year deduction decreases by a dollar for every dollar over $50,000. And again, you would amortize the remaining. Now you might be thinking, what is this amortization thing? How does that work? Basically, you deduct that remaining amount, the amount that you're amortizing equally over 180 months or 15 years. And you would also want to complete and attach form 4562 to your return for the first year that you're in business. So if your total startup costs are less than 50, you deduct $5,000 in the first year and then you amortize the rest over 180 months. If they're more than $50,000, your first year deduction decreases by $1,000 for every dollar over $50,000. And then again, you'd still amortize the remaining over 180 months. So let's go through some examples. Let's, let's put some numbers into practice because I think that this will definitely help make this more clear. Let's say you have startup costs of $3,500. You would be able to deduct 100% of that in your first year because it's under $5,000. So the first year that you're in business, you get a startup cost deduction of $3,500. Let's say you had startup costs of $45,000. You would deduct $5,000 in the first year of business, and then you would amortize the remaining $40,000 equally over 180 months, or $222 per month. Let's say you had startup costs of $52,000. This is where you get that partial deduction. So you would get a first year deduction of $3,000, which is $5,000 less the $2,000 that you went over, $50,000. And then you'd amortize the remaining $49,000 equally over 180 months, or $272 per month. If you have startup costs of $65,000, that would all be amortized equally over 180 months. So organizational costs would work the same exact way if you qualify for them. Great. Now, there might be some confusion still. So we're going to talk about some questions that we see often in our free Facebook group that are also associated with startup costs. And the biggest one is, when are you considered in business and no longer startup costs? So you have kind of a window here. You have pre-business, which would be startup costs, and then you have opening date or you're considered in business or operational and then everything after that is just operational activity and so you're considered to be in business or open when your first sale occurs so let's use an example of starting a lawn service business you may have made flyers and bought some weed killer and a few garden tools and you're going to be using all those as startup costs until you have your first sale once your first sale occurs expenses are just going to be normal operating costs So in that example, let's say you have $3,500 in some of that weed killer, garden tools, things like that, that add up before you operate business. Those are going to be startup costs. And then once you have your first sale, anything after that is just normal operating costs. Some people say, how does equipment factor into this? Equipment would not be included in startup costs, but rather depreciated. So let's assume you're starting that lawn care business that we just talked about. Your new $20,000 $20,000 lawnmower or $10,000 lawnmower for the business would be an asset that you depreciate and would not be included in startup costs. People say, when can I start recording these startup costs? And this is a key thing. You have to wait until the new business actually begins to start realizing the tax benefits 
of your startup expenses, but you can start accruing and recording those costs as soon as you start thinking about creating your business. This is key. If you're thinking about creating a business today, but let's say you're not going to open it for another year. Those items that you are, have right now, as you're thinking about doing it, so you're doing some research, you're meeting people for lunch, you're doing some traveling, those are all startup costs that you want to accrue and record. Now, you don't get to actually realize the tax benefit and the deduction of those costs until you actually open your business, but you want to make sure you're recording them prior to that because those are all valid expenses. If you're in this stage and you're like, shoot, I haven't been recording stuff, go back through your statements and find out some of those expenses that were related to the startup of your business. Next question that comes up too is, what happens if my startup never becomes an active business? And so you need to start and make the business an active business for the startup cost to be deductible. If you fail after starting, then you can realize the unamortized deductions right away. But if you never start, the costs that you had in your attempt to acquire or begin a specific business are capital expenses and you can deduct them as a capital loss. Costs you had before making a decision to acquire or begin a specific business would be personal and non-deductible. So when we're talking about this, the one key word I want you to think about is specific. We said the costs you had in your attempt to acquire or begin a specific business are capital expenses and you can deduct them as a capital loss. Now, the key word there was specific. So example, if you're just doing general research and analysis and do not have any kind of specific business in mind or anything like that, and you end up not moving forward with anything, those are considered personal expenses and not deductible. But let's say you're going to plan to open this restaurant. You're putting all this effort into it. You're doing you know, all this research and figuring all these things out, and you get to plan this restaurant. You're planning to open it, and all of a sudden you talk to the city, and they don't have any license, liquor license available to you, and you want to have a bar there. And so you can't open that restaurant. That is different because you have a specific business in mind that can still be deductible. Those startup costs can be deductible. Even though you never started the business, you would just take it as a capital loss. But if you're just like, um, I might start a restaurant, I might start a lawn care business, or I might start a meal delivery service, and you're not sure any idea of what you want to go into, that would not be specific business, and those would not be deductible unless you went into business and became an active business for that. So what else do you want to keep in mind? Always keep detailed and accurate records to substantiate the cost in case the IRS challenges you. This is huge. Um, just because you're, you know, the, you still have to validate these expenses if you're using them as startup costs. So they still have to be valid business expenses. Like I said in the beginning, you can't just take your kids to uh, a water park and say, oh, we're just going to put this as a startup cost probably not going to work unless there is some valid reason that that could be a valid business expense. So you still want to be thinking about, is this a valid business expense? If so, we want to keep detailed and accurate records so that if the IRS challenges us on it, we have supporting documentation to back that up. Second, once your business starts, expenses after that start date move to normal operating expenses and stop being added to startup costs. So again, you have a window of pre-opening your business or pre-first sale. Those are startup costs. Once that first sale occurs, anything after that is just normal operating expenses. And if you close your business before costs are fully amortized, which is that 180 months, you will take the remaining amount that's unamortized when you close this business. So this startup cost area can oftentimes be a confusing piece. Uh, hopefully I was able to break it down in an easier to understand format for you. Just want to kind of go through the summary again. Um, startup costs are, are costs that you incur for creating an active business or investigating the creation of a business. Um, to qualify, it has to be a valid expense and it has to be a cost you pay or incur, pay or incur before your active trade or business begins. Examples are travel, meals, training, market analysis, um, office supplies, advertising your business before you open, contract labor, wages, consultants, things like that that you're paying. There's also organizational costs that also get given a threshold. Organizational costs are going to be incorporation fees, legal fees, organizational meetings, things like that. You get the important number to think about is $50,000. This is $50,000 for startup costs and $50,000 for organizational costs. If your total costs are less than fifty, dollars you deduct $5,000 in the remaining year and amortize the remaining portion. If it's more than fifty, 
your first year deduction decreases by a dollar for every dollar over $50,000. And then again, you amortize the remaining. Amortization is done equally over 180 months. So examples we gave, if you have $3,500, that's all deductible in the first year because it's under that $5,000. If you have startup costs of $45,000 as an example, you would deduct that $5,000, that's the max in the first year, and then you'd amortize the remaining out. Again, you're considered to be in business and no longer in startup mode once the sale occurs. Equipment would not be part of startup costs. Those are assets that are depreciable. And you can start recording. You want to be keeping track of these startup costs at the very beginning um, because you can start recording them and accruing them. Now, you don't get the actual tax benefit or realization of those those expenses until your business starts to operate. That's when you get that $5,000 in the first year in advertisation of the remaining. So again, hopefully this was helpful. If you want more tips on this or other kind of tax saving strategies to just make sure you're paying the least amount in taxes as legally possible, check out our tax minimization program, taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash tax, taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash tax. And in there, we have a library of tax strategies and implementation guides on how you can start utilizing these strategies today. We have unlimited access to our team to ask general tax questions, a private Facebook group, and monthly group training. So that's all I have for today. I want to thank you for listening to another episode, and I will see you next week. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast from the team at Jetro. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review on whatever platform you listen to us on and share with other business owners. If you have any questions or future topics you want to hear, email them to tax at jetrotax.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.